Check this out. Assalamu alaikum. You're watching The Dean Show, and this is the mailbag. Let's get into the mail right away and see what's coming in. I've got a question here. It says, why does Islam allow slavery? Or does it? Good question. One of the things I like to encourage Muslims to do, when you answer a question, begin by saying, thank you for asking me about my religion. This sets a nice tone for you presenting your answer. And it lets people know that we're very open to answer these questions regardless of how harsh they may sound. The second thing is to let people know that in Islam we don't lie. We can't lie, especially about our religion. And we have the proof. We have the authentic documents that date back centuries ago. And we have the Quran still being recited today as it was when it came to Muhammad, peace be upon him. So what it says is what it says, but it's in the Arabic. So they need to understand that we're talking in English, so we're translating these things. So let's get with it. The question is asking about slavery. Does Islam allow slavery? Absolutely. Yes, it does. Islam does. But wait, hold on. Before you go any further, there's only one kind of slavery, and it's only one way. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Allah. Not that Allah is our slave, but we are all slaves to Allah. This is the meaning of Abdi, slave, Abdullah, the slave of Allah. We as human beings consider that it should be that there, as Muslims, our worship, our servitude is only to him, just to Allah. That's what we accept as slavery. But other than that, other than that, Islam is telling us what is true taqwa, what is true piety, what is real righteousness, and it's to feed a, a person who is indigent in their day of need. It is to take care of the orphan, and it is to free a slave. This is in the Quran. Now, why, if Islam is telling you to have slavery, is it telling you that a very righteous thing to do is to free a slave? So we know that there is slavery even today in the world. But it, it is Islam that has it as a, a prerequisite, really, to understand that slavery is to Allah. Allah does not like the human beings being enslaved by each other. But some things are not totally forbidden all at once in Islam. As an example, alcohol, when the first prohibition came was, don't approach your worship while you're drunk. Well, you've been drinking. Wait until you're sober. Then you approach your worship. Well, that makes sense. Then another verse comes later with more clarification, more intensity, and it says, now all alcohol is forbidden. Stop. Hmm? One verse doesn't cancel the other one. It magnifies or amplifies the verse so that you can see how the intention of Allah for you is what? To get closer to him is to leave off these things. Now, what about slavery? If a person is in servitude, and there's a difference here, because the slavery that we talk about in America is one that we're very familiar with, a very horrible thing. But there is servitude that people can sell themselves in, as indentured servants. In fact, some of my own relatives came to this country as indentured servants about 400 years ago. And when they did, it wasn't considered a put down or bad because they were going to work for a period of time and then be released from their contract. And that's what they did. They worked and worked for so many years. Then they were released and free to get land and establish themselves. And that's the way some of the first of the Estes family came to this country in the 1600s. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about slavery at the time of Muhammad, I want you to know that it was the Muslims who demonstrated how important it is to free slaves. Bilal, who was the great Mu'adhin, the caller to the prayer, had formerly been a slave of the idolaters of the Qureshi tribe. And they treated him miserable, very miserable, simply because he believed there was one God. They said, no, you need to worship our gods, Allah, while al Uzza, And he refused. He said, I'll do other things you want me to do, but none of this. I can't worship other than my God. So what did they do? They took him to the desert and they beat him and they whipped him until he was bleeding. And then they threw him on the ground on his back. And then they placed a giant rock, a boulder on his chest. And he was left there in the burning sand 
Well, they were tormenting him. Worship our gods. Worship our lot. Worship our loser. And he kept saying, Ahad, 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 which means in Arabic, one, one, one. He was calling the name of Allah, which is Ahad, the unique. And here's the man, only crime he's committed is that he won't worship these false gods of his owners. Now, at that time, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, came upon the scene and saw this horrible condition. He raced back and got a bag of money. And he came back to them and he offered this bag of money, which was a lot for that time. And he said, I want to buy him. And they said, where is this? And somebody said, take it just before, you know, he'll increase, inflate the price of slaves. We can't afford it. Just take it, get, get rid of that guy. So he released him immediately. Abu Bakr bought him as a slave and then released him and gave him his freedom immediately. Later on, those whom he'd given the money to said, you know, you could have dealt with us and we would actually have sold him to you a whole lot cheaper. He said, you could have dealt with me and I would have given you a lot more. Because why? Because I don't need him to be a slave to you or to anybody. We're all slaves to Allah. And this was the attitude of the early Muslims. Now, granted, some Muslims in, since that time have committed atrocities and done some bad things, but it doesn't represent Islam. What it means is that some Muslims make mistakes. They do bad deeds. And your point, <laughs> it means what? It means they didn't follow Islam. But if you want to know what is Islam, you look to the Quran, you look to the teachings of Muhammad, and you will find that slavery is only for Allah. May Allah guide all of us. Till next time, that was the mailbag. Salam alaikum.